This was uh, an article sent to me, and uh, I thought it was well worth reading. All right, I and I quote, Like a rebellious, strong-willed child, hiding out on the edge of the woods as night descends, not wanting to go home, knowing that he has a spanking awaiting him, he refuses to repent and do what's right and come home, and so must continue to suffer as his judgment accrues higher and higher. So Christendom refuses to repent of our sins before God. Christians will bend over backwards to obey 300,000 unjust laws of man, but yet claims that God's 603 laws are too much, or believes the lie of the serpent, like Eve did, that God does not need to be obeyed. The enemy indeed is a problem, but not the main problem. They are merely the symptom of the problem. We, God's people, are the problem. He has sent the enemy not to evangelize, try to squeeze that humanistic one-world interpretation out of the dragon, spewing forth a flood to drown the woman and her child. Christ nowhere said that the sheep are to lay down their lives for the dogs, wolves, and swine, but as judgment. If we repent before God for our plethora of sins against him, and repentance entails turning from what he forbade and turning to what he commanded, without which there is no repentance, and any confession is merely humanistic delusion, God will deliver. But God will not deliver rebellious children. And why should he deliver us from what we are willing to tolerate? And Christ will not return for a rebellious bride, unwilling to submit herself to his rule. As feminist women reject the headship of their husband, so do effement Ephement, ephem, ephemem, why am I having so much trouble? As feminist women reject the headship of their husband, so do ephemnent, emasculated Christians reject the rule of Christ. Christ's rule is God's law. Not one jot or tittle shall pass and it is not to be interpreted according to modern sinful practices considered normal. God calls it sin and abominations, and they never change. And we are to reject and separate ourselves from those who are not his people, or we pollute ourselves. Things will only grow worse the longer God's people continue in sin, thinking that the problem is anything else but the real problem, them. God save your people. This was written by Robert B-A-L-A-I-C-I-U-S. Uh, I believe it's pronounced Balakai. Bal I don't know. But uh, he's with Sacred Truth Ministries in Mountain City, Tennessee. And um, I'll tell you what, 
He's been in full-time ministry since 1990. Uh, that's about the time I really got serious with the Lord, um, having stumbled many times. But, uh, boy, there's a lot of truth in this. Anybody that doesn't teach repentance, turning from sin, anybody that doesn't teach that is a false preacher, a false minister, a liar. I don't care how many people subscribe to their channel, how many members they have in their church. If they don't teach repentance, and if they try to muddy the water by saying, oh, well, you know, God repented. Uh, I'm sorry. God does not repent of sin like we have to. Okay? There's a difference. It might grieve God in his heart that something is happening. And he might repent, be sorry that he may even made us, like in Genesis chapter 6. But he doesn't have to repent of sin. So anybody that doesn't teach repentance for sin, beware. And if you don't believe it, read Je uh, Revelation chapter 2, where Christ tells the church to repent. You see, these deceivers will even tell you that repentance means to turning from your unbelief in God into turning to believing in God. Well, in Revelation chapter 2, Christ told a believing church to repent. Repent of what? A believing church has, having to repent of their unbelief? That's the kind of nonsense they teach. There's a very famous preacher. His first name is Stephen, and he's in... Uh, Arizona, and he's got many, many, many thousands of people that listen to him, and he teaches that kind of stuff. I mean, really. I mean, oh, you don't have to repent of your sins. No, no, just, just repent of your unbelief in the Lord. I mean, even the devil believes in God. Read James chapter 2. Is the devil going to be saved? I don't think so. Lake of fire, people. Lake of fire. And that's, boy, this is, this is, I, I, I couldn't improve on this. No way. And, um, yeah, so, all right, well, I just remember, I'm on Minds.com, I'm on BitChute, B-I-T-C-H-U-T-E, and I'm on BrightEon.com. Uh, every day I check my YouTube channel to see if I'm still up. up. And uh, honestly, I'm surprised. I really am. So, all right. Well, uh, somebody's working on a website. And uh, when, uh, when it gets really up and going, um, we'll let you know. His name's Jeff. Please pray for him. He's been sick with flu. Um, yeah, I notice every time there's heavy chemtrails in the sky, I notice I get sick. I used to go three years without getting sick. Now I get sick three times a year. I don't think it's just my getting older. I mean, I eat good and... You know, I think it's the stuff in the air. They're poisoning us. Poisoning us with the air we breathe. Poisoning us with the water we drink. Poisoning us with the food we eat. The enemy indeed is a problem. But they're just a symptom. So, all right, well, this is Chaplain Bob, Light of the World Ministries. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God. Slain before the foundation of the world, in Jesus' name, amen.